you know, we met with the FBI director, the national FBI, the man. And, and so, uh, so he came in and, and we were talking and, and, and I had the opportunity to uh, meet with him, uh, with just a couple of us and we were meeting with him. And, and as we talked, he mentioned the fact that, and we got to talking about uh, uh, the violence, right? Crime and the escalation of crime, and, and particularly not just in urban centers, but in rural areas and suburban areas, but there's a higher level of intensity in urban centers, uh, and, 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 but there's newfound violence, particularly homicides and with guns uh, all over the United States. And he said that there used to be a time where they could find a common thread. They, used, they could say, well, you know, it's because of gangs. He said, but they can't say that now. He said, it's because of, uh, 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 of um, drug, drug trafficking. But he can't say that now. He said, there is some conversation about the availability of guns, which makes it easier to do a homicide, but that's not the threat, right? That's not the threat. And he also said, it's not the threat about this Ferguson effect where police officers are pulling back. He said, you get some of that, but our police officers are not pulling back. They are more cautious. That's why they want to know if you got their back. But, 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 but at the same time, that has not stopped them from doing what they're doing. So it's not that that the police are just laying down on their job, at least not in Cleveland. So what is the common thread? So I'll tell you what I suggested to him, then we'll get to the point. I suggested to him that there is a common thread. And that common thread comes in three forms. A lack of access <coughs> to the benefit of the operation of the system. A lack of access. Meaning that I can't get a contract, I can't get a job, the system doesn't function for me. As a matter of fact, the function of the system is contrary to my interest. And more and more people are in that mode, not just the traditional people that you would think that are minorities in urban centers. You have more, why you think the political landscape is the way it is and why you have people now are being so receptive to conversation and, 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 and attitudes that we would think is outrageous before. Why? There are more and more people who believe that they don't have access to this system and the benefit of the system is not <clears throat> More and more people. The second common thread is that people legitimately so believe that there is injustice and a lack of fairness towards them, which goes to the point about arbitration. How do, you, how do you tell somebody that, well, you have to believe in the system when, in fact, the system has failed them in terms of what on its face believe is, seemed to be a completely wrong decision? So there's a legitimate sense of lack of fairness and a sense of injustice. That's the third thing. I mean, the second thing. And then finally, the, the people just believe the system don't give a damn about them no more. It just don't care. They, 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 it, 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 the system just doesn't care about them anymore. So you apply those three things, and you have what you have today. You have more and more people who do not have a stake in the game, in the system, more and more people who believe the system is of no benefit to them, more and more people believing that when the system operates, it is not to their benefit. As a matter of fact, it is unfair and unjust to them, unjust to them, and that they just don't care. And I'm not just talking about government. I'm talking about the private sector, too. They have this sense that the thing as a whole and so here I am trying to do a consent <coughs> decree and comply with an agreement that helps us reform the police department and create a different behavior and interaction between the police and the citizens to ensure constitutionality, to ensure bias-free policing, to ensure if you use force that you use it in a proper way and not be excessive about it. And knowing full well that I did every little bit of that and did it according to, to, the, to what is required, that I will not reduce crime. 
while the demand on us and you hear it every day and so do we, is that we reduce crime and that people are tired and fed up and afraid. And this document does not deal with that. So I have to then not only deal with this document, but deal with that. And then I have to deal with what is the substantive underlying cause of crime, because crime is only a symptom. It is not a, 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 a cause. Crime is a symptom. And whenever we're dealing with crime and we deal with it as police and think the police going to solve it, then we are never going to resolve the underlying issue. And that underlying issue is about access, fairness and justice, and caring. And we have failed as a society, both public and private, to address those issues for people.